Hi and welcome to my fifth tutorial about my engine RPG tools. Today we will continue where we left yesterday. So let's launch the level editor and then you should hopefully see the level we created last time. And um, now I will show you some more features about the level editor. Um, since there are a lot of images it's easy to get lost, but there are some options to filter them. So one is to just filter by text. So if I search for barrel or something like that, I can I can find images easily if I know the name. But um, if I know in which directory I want to search for assets, you can click on directories and then you can deselect the directories you don't want to see. So let's clear everything in the PV games folder. And now I just want to, to display a couple of folders. So in this case, we have a subfolder sets and then clear everything inside. And in this case, I just want to, to see the, the expansion folder. Since the images are quite big, you can reduce the scale to have a better overview. If you use assets quite often and you can right click and mark them as favorite. And here you can toggle if you only want to see your favorite images. So I can mark some as favorite and they will be stored. So next time you open the tool, they will still be marked as your favorite asset. And then they should appear in this list. So let's place some stuff here. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. So many nice images. If you already have a lot of trees, I'm currently searching some smaller houses. Yeah, or maybe a big tower is also nice. Yeah, let's place a big tower here, why not? So, and for example, for this big tower, of course, you shouldn't be able to walk through the tower. So I can now show you how to block pathfinding for that. So now you select the path layer. You can change the radius. Let's use three or something like that. And then just hold the left mouse button to block pathfinding here. Something like that. You can also with control Z, you can undo the last steps if you did something wrong, but you can also via right click, you can, you can delete it again. And the same here, maybe with smaller radius. Let's use, let's use radius one. That's Good enough, and then cut it here a bit. And when you when you launch the play mode, it will always start from the centered position you have currently selected. So you can quickly test stuff from here. So now it moves. Now the hero moves around the tower. Okay, that doesn't look that good regarding the set order. So 
So let's block a bit more here. Yeah, that was that was not very good. Let's test from here. It's better the set order is still incorrect in some case, but that's easily easy to fix. Should hopefully be okay, but yeah, you can fine tune it. That's not part of this tutorial, I guess you get the idea. And now we can place something else. Maybe we can now add another unit, but in this case, a friendly unit. And for that, we can also use an existing character we created. Or a new character. Let's quickly create a new character. I only want to see the pieces. Then use some default equipment. Let's give her shield, which is not displayed here, but the paper doll, it should displayed okay maybe just in the animation change the scale okay for some reason I don't see the shield But yeah, it doesn't matter for this tutorial. And then we can save the character. Oh, caps lock was activated. And then switch back to the level editor, and now we should be able to select it, female knight. And we can also set the right, set the direction she looks to. There is a bug that it's not placed at the cursor. I will look into that. Place her here, and we can move the enemy somewhere else so that he doesn't attack us while we talk to her. So now we can select her, and by the way, um, you can deselect objects when you press somewhere where no object is located or via pressing escape. And when you hover above an object, it is it is marked as white. And when you click on it, then it's selected and you see the properties here. That's very important to know. And when you have when you select an object, so when it's displayed in yellow in the background, then you can drag it around if you want to. And the level editor supports Undo Redo for 
for most basic operations like moving objects and creating objects and deleting objects. It does not support Underido for the properties currently. I will most possibly add that in the future. So we can move her here and then give her a basic dialog. My friend, what, what do you want? I have a good idea for a story right now, but I just want to show you how it works. So what do you want to do? And then you can add potential replies. Give me a thought maybe. So that's the first option. You tell her to give her a thought and then you see, you can see here you have actions and you can add actions and there are a couple of actions you can execute now. For example, add an item, add a resource, move the camera, uh, scale the camera, you can detach the camera from the hero and attach it to the hero, play a sound, play music. So there are a lot of options without any Lua scripting. And in this case, she should give us a sort. So let's choose at item. And then you can just choose the sort here. And that should be it. Then you can activate close dialog. Then it should be closed automatically. Let's add the second reply. me a bow or I currently don't have music or sound I could show you so let's see which actions we have um Yeah, we can lock a text message, for example. Let's try that. Then you can you can also just press F five to directly play without seeing the options window, as you can see here. So that's the shortcut. Then you can directly test it and oh, I forgot one thing. When you press F5, it uses the settings you used last time, but we need to once select the UI state we want to test. In this case, we want to test the in-game state. So I need to configure that once. But the tool saves the state and next time you don't need to do that and you can just use F5. So now it should hopefully work. Yes. Okay. Um, so here's the dialog. The UI is very ugly. In my in my normal project it looks much better, but uh, in the example project I just used dummy graphics or no graphics at all. So you just have a functional UI and need to replace the graphics but I will show you how to do that in a later tutorial. So let's uh, focus on the function. So now we choose give me a sort. The dialog closes because we activate this option and now you have a second sort here. And you can talk to her again. You can also disable that so that the dialog only appears once. And then, okay, the text was wrong but it works as, as I configured. So now there is a message which appeared here. So with this um, system, you can already do a lot of things. So with escape, you can stop the play mode. And um, every reply also has conditions. So 
the most important condition is the variable condition. You can just say the variable with the name x would have a value greater than 10, for example. And with actions, you can also set variables or increase variables, set or modify. So with these functions combined, you can also create some more complex quests or dialogues. Let's delete this for now. You can also have an action to, to switch to another level. So just give her another reply, or we will just create a new level. Yeah, we will use the default settings, but you can also create bigger levels if you want to. And then let's create some kind of dungeon level. For that, we will use the Infernus tile set. I will just quickly quickly create something because in this tutorial I, I won't show you how to create very nice levels that takes a lot of time. Okay, these are huge, but still um, I will place them in the background layer so you will always, all units will be rendered on top of them. Then let's place some that use. Yeah, this should be in the same layer as the units. Then you can walk behind them correctly. Stone, and then some background stuff. Yeah, now you can go to the multiple object mode and select some of these. And then you can randomly place them. So now, now we add some units. In this case, we will place a demon. Yeah, we can also change the color if we want to. Something like that. That's the wrong layer, but that's easy to change. So let's Place it here. Then we should block pathfinding a bit. Here, there. Let's increase the radius. And then we can save the level for now. So dungeon zero one. And now we will create an area that's also a, a layer type where you can place areas. And every area has a name or should have a name. Let's call it just start. You can create different shapes, so a rectangle, a circle, or just a position. In our case, we can use a circle. So 
and then we can just paint it. So let's say we want to spawn here, then you can draw the circle. Okay, I hit Control Z because I forgot to add the name, or the name got lost when I changed the shape, which I also need to change. So now you can directly see the name of the area. You can also edit the color, which is not need for the game, it's just for you as a, as a usability feature, but you can edit it here. So you can change the color here. Let's say it's green. So the area is called start, and now we want to to have an option to switch to this level. So she has two replies currently. Now I will add a third reply. We go to the dungeon. Then we add an action, and the action should be load the level. Then you can just browse the level and set the area, which is called start. That should be it in theory. Let's test if it works. Let's press F5, talk to her, and yeah, now we have three options and can select it. And there we are in this level. And currently the demon is not an enemy, which can easily be changed. So yeah, as you can see here, the, the levator supports multiple tabs and you can just switch back and forth. Now I added an area by accident. I want to edit the demon. So to change the team, you need to expand the game logic folder and then set the team to enemy and we should also check the stats or the hit points and some strength that should be enough Now we can just test it directly in this level. Yeah, now he attacks you. It's behind you. Yeah, the animation is loaded on demand. So uh, the first time you see it, it's invisible because it's still loading in the background. As I said in the last tutorial, uh, you can you can activate preload images, then it will be loaded initially, and in the exported game, it will be loaded before the game starts, because it would look very ugly if the enemy would be invisible. But for testing, I think it's nicer to have this background loading. So I would just keep it as it is. But in general, you can deactivate background loading. You need to go to File Preferences and then disable background texture loading. But as I said, usually it's it's more convenient to to keep it turned on. So now test the game flow once completely. So give me a sword and let me go. Oh, wait, maybe we should equip the sword because it's annoying to always fight with the bow. Now we can go to the dungeon and the sword Okay, this the equipment state wasn't stored. That's something I will look into. And now we can attack the demon. Oh, 
Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I will show you more in the upcoming tutorials. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.